What's up, people of YouTube? I'm Karsatowski, and welcome back to the Karsatowski Games YouTube channel. So, we continue the Wii Sports Bowling Winter Spring Tournament today, and we will have our fifth match. So, to recap, our first match of the top 16 consisted of Dewey and Pee Wee. Dewey moved on in that match, and then the second match we had Wakey versus Jenna Kate. And Jenna Kate barely survives that match. And then we had Tito and Chong. Chong was the runaway. Was, Chong was the runaway winner of that match. And then last time, one of the best matches we've had yet between Just Breath and Dawson. And Dawson barely squeaks by in the fourth match. So let's get on to today's fifth match of the top 16 of the Wii Sports Bowling Winter Spring Tournament. The first bowler of our match. He's got dreadlocks, he's got purple glasses, he's got the goatee and the full beard going. It's Spank Your Doe. So Spank Your Doe's kind of an interesting character. He hasn't been on the Wii console for too, too long, but he's still a fairly beloved me. So it looks like he's going to go and follow advice from a sp from Dawson and just Breath. Nice and he's just going to go hard and straight up the lane. Nice shot there. Nice soft speed and rev rate. She is the oldest out of all of the Miis on this console and in this Wii Bowling Tournament. It's Grandma. Grandma also goes by Angry Grandma is one of the few left-handed bowlers we have in this tournament. And she actually bowls with her left hand. So we'll see how it, how Grandma does in this bowling tournament. First shot, coming up. Ooh, and that shot didn't even make it to the pocket. So it's like Grandma's gonna have to work on some releases here. Now that would have been a pretty good shot. It would have been light if it was the first shot, but... She misses that spare. Gives Spanker Doe an early opening. Ooh, Spanker Doe goes a bit light, leaving a four pin. Grandma just needs to get lined up here. Which looks like she threw that one a bit slow and almost tripped out the seven pin. Spanker Doe's going right about the same angle. The last two shots have been a little bit too far right. He's got pretty low rev rate, and he doesn't throw the ball super fast either. Pretty good looking shot. Pretty good strike. It went just a tad high, but it had just enough revs on it to trip what would be a really difficult split. <clears throat> and that's the third shot that's went light for Spanker Doe. So it looks like Spanker Doe's going to have to move a little bit further to the inside part of the lane. And now this is Grandma's turn to get back into this match. Uh, and she doesn't put quite enough hook on that ball. Grandma has a pretty decent rev rate for her age. And Spanker Doe once again finds the pot. Nice shot there. Make up after that open frame. Looks like Grandma might have thrown that one a little bit too slow, but I think it was just a little bit too far right. Covers that 7 pin nicely. So this is basically a 5 pin match. And... Spanker Doe can take the lead with this shot. And he leaves another split. Those kind of splits have been very common within the last two videos. We've seen, actually, ever since about Wakey versus Jenna Kate, we had a lot of those. And also in the last video, we had some of those in the first match. Ooh, I think, yeah, Grandma just made a really bad shot there. Grandma's not really finding the pocket. Like, she's getting the ball to hook enough that those spares 
but on her first shot, she's just missing the pocket entirely. She's really only had two good shots so far this game. That was probably the best looking shot that she had at release point. She had a very similar break as she did in the second frame, but it's not really as much of how as it is how many. Grandma takes a 13 pin lead going into the 8th frame. <clears throat> Pretty good shot for Spanker though. Almost leaves the 8 pin. Another good shot. Oh man. That's a terrible break. She only, she didn't get the trip out like Spanker Doe did. And now it's Spanker Doe's time to take a little bit of a lead. After that opening from Grandma. And that's a touch high. Pays ultimate price. Very difficult spare. Oh! <laughs> Splits are cheap and easy in this tournament, folks. That right there is made less than 1% of the time in professional bowling. But Spanker, though, made that look simple and easy. And now Grandma's going to have to strike now. Stay a little bit of lead. Ooh, she leaves it. Six pin. All right. She's still going to have a 4-pin lead going into the 10th frame. So now here's the situation. <clears throat> if Spanker Doe strikes out in the 10th frame, then Grandma will need the first two strikes and 7 pins to shut him out. Got that one a little bit inside. Yeah, he leaves a 4-pin on that shot. Okay, well, count's pretty important here because that still forces Grandma to get the first strike and count. He does get that strike. Trips out with the seven pin. So now Grandma's going to need some good stuff in here. And she misses the head pin again. Well, she gets the head pin out, but she barely touches it. So now she has to spare in order to win this game. Oh, she barely covers that one. If she would have missed that, she would have lost count for this game. She would have lost. Now, she still needs... 8 pins to win. And nine will be enough. Man, Grandma survives with the 180 to 178. None of these bowlers have really figured out this lane thus far. So Grandma has a two pin advantage going into game two. So it's still anybody's game. And that is pretty much the closest that any bowler has been to each other in a one game match. And if these bowlers don't figure out how to get consecutive strikes soon, I think it's going to remain a really close match. Because they've made good shots, but they've made plenty of not-so-good shots as well. They've gotten high, they've gotten light, they've left splits. I mean, they pretty much everything to keep for a difficult match, we've witnessed the last game. So none of these bowlers are really giving each other a chance to really run away with it. Huh, and that's a stone eight for Spanker though. Yeah, they just really haven't figured out the lanes yet. I don't think any of these players have doubled this entire match thus far. And it's still not gonna be any doubles. Huh. Well, the lowest series that we've had throughout our tournament so far was by Pee Wee who only shot a 526, and he played far out to the right side. So basically the complete opposite that Grandma's doing, and he couldn't figure anything out. 
So this might be the lowest scoring match that we might have if these bowlers can't shoot over 200. <laughs> Man. Grandma's not really getting very good breaks here. She's just letting Spanker Doe have all the opportunities he needs to stay ahead of Grandma. And honestly, Grandma got pretty fortunate that last match. Because if Spanker Doe would have struck out like he needed to, then Spanker Doe would be leading going into the second game. Nah, that was too high for Grandma, but she actually tripped out the nice. four pin. That's probably the best break she's gotten within the last game and a half. Now Spanker Doe's working on a double, has a chance to go for a turkey. Oh, well he trips out a four pin, but he can't get the seven to go with it. But he's still going to be at a... 24 at a 26 pin lead halfway through and that's probably the best shot that grandma's had and that's her first double of the match so grandma takes advantage now we have to see if spanker doe can apply the pressure yeah he needs to move a little bit further to the head pin He's already left the Sour Apple once in this match. And if he doesn't want to keep leaving them, he's going to have to move close to the head pin. Oh, and Grandma drifts high again. She's gone high and light more times as she's gotten flush in the pocket within 16 frames. But we've got a 17-pin match right now. And that's a better shot. That looked a little quick, but that was a really good shot from Grandma. Still a 17-pin match. And Spanker Doe gets another double. <clears throat> if it wasn't for that open frame by Grandma... And this match will be within single digits. This match is within 17 pins going to the foundation ninth frame. Oh, that ball was a little bit left the whole way. Picks it up. Okay, now Grandma has a chance to take advantage. Oh, just a little bit left. Only leaving... A 7 pin. Nice spare. So at this point, Spanker Doe pretty much just needs to keep the 10th frame clean. And he will win this game, and he'll be slightly ahead of Grandma going into the next match. So he can go out now at 2.13. Nice strike there for Spanker Doe. Alright, so Grandma needs really high count in this 10th frame. Oh, man, Grandma missed the head pin completely on that shot. And that was, that couldn't have come at a worse time for Grandma. She's really just trying everything to get to the pocket, but she keeps going so light. Alright, so Spanker Doe has a 213, and Grandma has a 193. So Spanker Doe has gained 20 pins on Grandma this game. And now, Spanker Doe is beating Grandma right now by 18 pins. Grandma has to beat Spanker Doe in this next game by at least 19 pins to move on to the top 8. This is a tight match all the way, folks. Neither bowler has run away with any of the games thus far. That's a great shot by Spanker Doe. So it looks like Spanker Doe has found a way to 
not leave any splits or really tough spares, but Grandma has it really figured out anyway to consistently get to the pocket. And that shot looked pretty good halfway down the lane, but it just labored and left five. And she only, oh, she actually barely picks up that spare. But Grandma's in trouble. Like, she's going to have to figure something out if she's going to beat Spank Your Doe. Because I think Spank Your Doe is probably going to go out with at least a 220 or 230. I think Spank Your Doe is pretty lined up right now. Hmm. Touch high for Grandma. Nice cover, but Grandma's going to need strikes. Just spares aren't going to cut it in this game. Ooh, almost three in a row, but a light seven pin. Ooh, that was a nice shot from Grandma. I think Grandma needs to at least get about five or six strikes in a row to put the pressure on Spanker Doe. Because Spanker Doe can definitely strike a lot. Like, I don't think he's going to get like four and five strikes in a row all the time. But he'll get probably two and three strikes here and there, and then leave a single pin or two, and then he'll probably go ahead and start striking again. But Grandma, like it's been everything from one pin standing to five pin standing after a shot. And that time it's three pin standing. Grandma just hasn't found a way to strike. She may strike for a frame or two, and then she'll just go extremely light in the pocket, or she'll just miss the head pin altogether. Nice throw. And Grandma's down by 23 right now, working on an open. And going high is not going to do her any favors. So from this tournament, we've seen that the players who have done consistently well are the players who have played that hard and straight line. Bowlers who have fairly low rev rates and who are able to loft it down to the arrows and just keep it tight on the lane. Those are the ones that we've seen who have had the most success, especially after the Just Breath and Dawson match. Oh, honestly, I think this match is over. I think this is Spank Your Doe's match to lose. It pretty... Pretty much both of them were struggling real bad in the first game. And then the second game, Spanker Doe seemed to find something to where he can at least make makeable spares, nice spare. leave makeable spares when he doesn't strike. And Grandma has struggled from the first frame of the first game to the seventh frame of the third game. And when you're doing a three-game match, you can't afford to just not know how you're going to nice play the lanes. And Spanker Doe is comfortably at a 46 pin lead with only three frames left. And honestly, stuff like that is fine. Like, it stinks to leave back to back solid eight pins, but if you've got over a 50 pin lead with two frames, with two and a half frames remaining, then you're in pretty good shape. Just have to focus on filling frames. Because Grandma does not have a very good ball reaction right now. She might actually have the lowest three-game score in this tournament. She may not even make it to 500. That 596 by Pee Wee so far is our lowest score in this tournament. Oh, and Spanker Doe almost makes that split again. So Grandma's really just trying to get out of the way right now. It's mathematically all but over. And at this point, she can only go out for 167. And Spanker Doe can go out for another 213. And he'll have to settle with 2-0. But he will take this victory, and Spanker Doe will make it on to the top eight. Nice and he will face the winner of match number six, which will be coming up in the next video.
Yeah, Grandma just never figured out these lanes. She never figured out how to play. And she probably is going to have the lowest score through three games out of any bowler. She goes in inside. Honestly, she probably would have averaged about 20 to 30 pins higher if she would have done that. So, the final game is a 203 to 2... Is a 203 to 156. So, our final results of match number 5 of the top 16 is Spank Your Dough with the 594 three-game series and Grandma with the 529 three-game series. So, Grandma actually has the second lowest score of this tournament, three pins ahead of Pee Wee, but it will be all Spanker Dough heading into the top eight. Well, everyone, so that was match number five of the top 16 of the Wii Sports Bowling Winter Spring Tournament. Don't miss out on next time as we go into our sixth match of the top 16. And if you guys would like to see the next videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss any more videos. I'm Karsatowski. Keep watching my content, and I will see you in the next video. See you guys.